Hey everybody, welcome back to Dallas Ducks this week. We're back for a second episode after our little hiatus there, and today we've got some players with us. Three 96s that play for the Dallas Ducks. Veteran players that have uh, played junior hockey for the last couple seasons, and they're involved in the playoff push. I'm going to start on my left, Sherman Mallory from Kentwood, Michigan, Grand Rapids area. Welcome. Riley Beal from the Chicago area. Welcome, Riley. Thank you. And Chris Vela from Rochester, New York. Uh, Sherm and Chris are back for, well, Sherm, or Chris is in his third season with the team, and Sherm is in his second. Riley came to the team early on this season. Actually, Sherm, you were the only one that started the season here. Why not? These crazy. two came along a little later. Yeah. There's a lot of changes this year. Exactly, yeah. Um, so, uh, as we said, uh, all 96ers, Riley, uh, first off, I want to apologize to you. I, uh, we did a, a Dell's Ducks week this week earlier, and unfortunately, uh, I messed up. Uh, the camera didn't work right. That was you and Shani, and I apologize for that. So, hopefully no we can get it right this time around. Um, you came to the team from the USPHL East. Um, is, are they similar leagues? Um, not really. I think that the USPHL Eastern Division is a bit less um, rough and tumble. There's a lot more body involved with the Midwest Division. I like that style of play a little bit better. Absolutely. I was going to say, you must uh, really like the move because uh, the physical game is definitely your style. Absolutely. You're a blue collar player for sure. Um, Sherm and Chris have uh, basically already committed to returning to the team next year, Riley, you still have another year of availability. You may still decide to go to college, though, right? It's up in the air right now. Right. Uh, and all three of you are veterans who have been through uh, the battles before. Um, the last 10 days or so have been kind of pinpointed as being a real turning point for the team. Uh, the Wisconsin Rapids series, even though it was a split, uh, the coach and most of the players that I've talked to have identified that week leading up to that that two game set um, and then beginning there as sort of a, a turning point where the locker room has really come together. Have you felt like that Chris? Yeah I think guys are really starting to figure it out and bought in. Okay, Riley you feel the same way pretty much? Yeah I agree. I think that everybody's pushing in the same direction. I think that everybody's got the same goal here. Yeah it seems like everyone's on the same page now. Really. Sure, this past weekend was an interesting one because you played uh, three different teams and three kind of radically different teams, I think, on yeah. Friday night, uh, sort of a finesse team in the St. Croix Valley uh, Magicians, more of a speed team. Uh, Ileana a team maybe similar to your style, more of a lunch bucket type style. Yeah. Uh, but you put up three consecutive goose eggs. Uh, it looks like it doesn't really matter what kind of uh, team you go up against. You just adapt. <laughs> well, I mean, we just uh, we want to stay playing the same exact way as that uh, coach tells us to play in the locker room, which is just hard hat, lunch pail, going to work, blue collar hockey. So we just grind every day, block shots just for the boys, and hopefully that we get the W at the end of the day. Awesome. Yeah, Chris, uh, it does. So you really don't really focus on what the other teams bring, and maybe you look at you know who to who to watch or what they do on power play and stuff like that, but really you just focus on your own game plan, I suppose. Yeah, we kind of, we kind of take note at some players and kind of notice which players are on the ice and have to watch out for that, but we mainly worry about ourselves and play our style of hockey. Okay. And Riley, um, when it is uh, more of a, of a grinding style like it was against Ileana, um, you seem to really enjoy yourself a little bit more, but uh, you're finding any kind of game too, it seems. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, especially lately, I've uh, after feeling like everybody's been pushing in the same direction, it just feels a lot better. It's a lot more fun to play. I feel more relaxed personally. Yeah, that's good to know. Now, all three of you uh, are veterans of junior, as we said before. Is this something that tends to happen every season, or is it kind of unique this year? Do you think? Where um, obviously you two, you went to. Uh, you went to the national tournament last year. You had to be kind of rowing together at least at some at, on some level. But is this something that you kind of get to every year when you're heading to the playoffs, you think, Chris? Yeah, I kind of think always at the beginning of the season, 
it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tougher. And towards the middle, towards the end of the season, it, it depends on the group of guys in the locker room, but guys will start to figure it out and buy in, try to be on the same page. And, and sure, I think we figured it out now. Awesome. That's good. Uh, <coughs> sure, when you do have a team, when you have been through it before, like you were last year with a team uh, that won the Bush Cup, um, do, you, do you try to do things like you did last year, or has each team kind of got its own identity? Yeah, each team has their own identity. And at the beginning of the season, that's just everybody's trying to figure out where they fit in the lineup, what their role is. And now I think everybody understands what we need to do to start winning games. And we've been doing that, and we've been pretty successful with it lately, so I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. And Riley, yourself as well, um, you've been, you've obviously you weren't with this team, but you've been with different junior teams and played at a high level. Is this something that's pretty <coughs> normal for a team to kind of find its identity in the latter stages of the season, or is it a little bit unique? I think it's a little bit unique in the sense that our coach does a really good job of weeding out the players who aren't on the same page. I think the locker room would do a good job of you know, keeping everybody on the same page in general. Okay. And I suppose to a certain extent, um, I, I don't, I don't want to make sure I say this right, but some players, I suppose, like they maybe have to be realistic to a certain extent and realize that they're going to have maybe a little bit of a diminished role or or, or more of a supporting role, and I, I suppose it just takes a while for some some guys to kind of buy into that. Do you think? Yeah, for sure. That. Yeah. Um, so looking ahead, um, the one thing that seems a little bit uh, off right now is the fact that we're you're going to go through an off week, well deserved, by the way. You guys have played well. You've worked hard. Uh, you're going to get a chance to maybe spend some a little bit of time with family, friends, girlfriends, whatever, um, <clears throat> excuse me, next weekend. Um, and then you're going to have to come back and, and be ready for the season. It didn't work real well at Christmas. You guys didn't come back from Christmas really uh, quite ready to go, I guess. Um, are you confident that you can carry what you got going now into the uh, into the final five games, Chris? Absolutely. What makes it different this time around? I think, I think our schedule. I think we realize that we can't take days off, and we need to really compete because we have the toughest schedule in the league right now. Our past five games, so I think guys figured out what it takes to win. We can't take days off. Okay, Riley. When I talked to Coach after the game Sunday, he said that he thinks that there's an excitement right now. That even if even if there's some downtime, people are going to go away for the weekend and stuff like that, which you know, they have every right to do. <clears throat> They're going to be eager and excited to get back and get right back to work uh, because of the way things are going. Do you, do you feel like that's going to be the case? 100%. I'm already excited to be in those next games. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So that's, the, that's the tough thing about right now. You should kind of just like to get going again. Uh, things are going so well. You really don't want a week off, but uh, it is good. we got some guys nicked up like Radcliffe and, and a couple other guys, uh, you know, that maybe. Uh, could use the time to get back on their feet and get going, and uh, it's only going to help, I would think. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, do you have any goals for the rest of the season or the next year or so? Oh, we got to get out to Boston. That's I think that's our biggest goal right now. I mean, anywhere we end up in the playoffs, we're probably going to have a tough draw either way. Okay. So, I mean, we just got to keep pushing through, just look for that end goal, which is winning uh, – I don't even know if there's a Nationals this year or I don't know what it is. So that I might mean, be it. <laughs> win, yeah, win yeah. whatever we can win. Right? Yeah. Go as far as we can, play as long as we possibly can this year, which this Agreed. is a group of guys that we want to play with. So I can see that we're going to go far. I wanna, it's going to be a good year. Chris, for you? I 100% agree with Sherm. Uh, Riley, uh, pretty much the same as these two? Absolutely. Um, at this point, you got five games to go. Uh, you know, like if, if you look at the different scenarios and stuff, I, I think that you need to really, or you want to finish in the top two, I think, to have home, to guarantee home ice for those first two crucial rounds. Um, you have five games, none of them are going to be easy. You're playing five, five, uh, five games against teams that are in that top five group all battling together. Um, how many wins do you think you need to uh, secure a spot in the top two? Five. Definitely all of them. Yeah, you need all, all of them? Yeah, all of them. We can't throw away a game. Yeah. 
Okay, and you're just gonna just play every game like it's the most important one, Absolutely. I assume. Absolutely. Okay. Like it's a playoff game. That's basically what it is right now. It's playoff, it's playoff hockey. Right playoff now. hockey. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's pushing for it. So, and what we've learned too in recent weeks, especially with a team like Ileana, is you can't look past anybody at all, can you? Um, even when you get to the postseason, if you think you could, you get a benefit of maybe getting a top seed. You, I, I don't know if there's anybody in that top eight that you can overlook. No, we can't. We can't underestimate anyone. Like in playoff hockey, anything can happen. You never know. Okay. Uh, now, for you, Chris, you, you uh, had a bit of a, an interesting experience this year. Uh, you played in the uh, Ontario Junior Hockey League for a bit uh, in a small town like Lindsay, which might be comparable to the Dells in size. Um, how was that experience for you? Uh, it was all right. Um, I don't think it was a fit for me I, as a player, and I had a lot more fun here in Wisconsin, and I missed it a lot. So I decided to make the move to come back here. It's a tough okay. decision, but I, it was worth it. I'm happy about my decision. And for you, Riley, you must just feel a little bit more at home being in the Midwest. Uh, uh, it's always fun to get away for a bit, but uh, you know you're a little bit closer to home. You can uh, you went home after the game Sunday and came back on Monday, so uh, mm -hmm. you can't really do that when you're on the East Coast. <laughs> no, you can't. It's nice to have my parents at games too now. Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, we want to thank the uh, Barney family for letting us do this here tonight. Uh, these three players are all billeted by Dave and Jeanette Barney and their family. And we're very thankful to them. They've uh, been billeting for the last two years. In fact, Sherm uh, was just recently uh, moved in, but he was here all last year. And I don't know if the rumors are true, but I, uh, I heard that you were brought in uh, because they need a little bit more of a Detroit Red Wing presence. That's what I, yeah, that's what I heard. I mean, I'm fine Riley, with Riley, who's a Chicago Blackhawks fan, and Chris Vela, who I believe is a Penguins fan. So they needed to counter the uh, the uh, alternate alternative uh, teams with a little bit more Detroit presence. Uh, so whatever it takes, uh, these three seem like they're getting along really good, just like everybody on the team. Uh, I wish you guys the best of luck the rest of the way. Uh, if you're fans watching this, the Ducks are off this week. Uh, they'll be back in action uh, the following weekend with three road games at St. Croix Valley and then two at Forest Lake, which is a, a suburb of Minneapolis. The following weekend after that, which I believe is the 20th and 21st, they're going to play at Wisconsin Rapids, I believe, on the Saturday. And then back here on the Sunday, their final game will be on home ice. Go to both of them. Those are going to be great games. They can use the support on the road, and they have appreciated the big crowds at home, haven't you? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. There's been some big crowds uh, oh, last good. couple yeah, weeks. We've had a lot of attendance in the past couple weeks. And, and uh, Coach said you guys have really noticed it, too, yeah. so that's really nice to see. Um, so come on out and check out the guys. They won't disappoint you. I guarantee it. Uh, these are vital, vital games for these guys. They're going to put everything they have uh into these uh, last five games. Uh, you can check them out at Fast Hockey, or like I said, make the trip to Rapids, or come on out to the last game at the Poppy Waterman Ice Arena. You'll be glad you made the trip. Guys, thanks very much for the time, Thank and you. good Thank luck you. the Thank rest you. of the way.